Motorplex plays host to dozens of nights of speedway racing here on the high-banked 500-metre clay oval in Quinana, Western Australia. With more than 100 cars taken to the track, turning hundreds of race laps in a single night, the track surface has to be up to the task of surviving the onslaught of racing action, while still being able to provide safe and entertaining racing for the drivers and the fans. At Perth Motorplex, just like any dirt oval racetrack, track preparation is much more than just rocking up on race day and sending cars out onto the speedway. It takes a meticulous process to make sure that this track is in the optimum condition to go racing. You don't want to make things so that they're too wet, so it's just a wet, slippery, sloppy mess, or too dry, so it's very dusty and wears out tires. Neither of those conditions are desirable, so you have to make sure that you look after things in the best possible manner. And thus, a consistent track preparation process is born. Meet Mikey Rimmer, track curator here at the Perth Motorplex since 2015. Mikey is tasked with the job of making sure every race night has a track which can please the teams, drivers and the fans. No pressure, right Mikey? Finding his natural habitat. <laughs> Going slowly in a water truck. <laughs> As track curator at Perth Motorplex, my main role is of course prepping the speedway track. Um, for our weekly or fortnightly race meetings, which is generally entails a Wednesday practice and a, and a Saturday, or sometimes a Friday and a Saturday race meeting. Throughout the week, on a, the lead up to a Speedway event, I'll spend generally 50 to 60 hours that week prepping the Speedway track um, with a pretty small team. Uh, one of our other uh, employees here, Sharpie, who will give me a hand um, driving the tractor in the lead up. And then on, a, on event day, Friday or Saturday, Rod Bottrell um, comes, and, uh, comes and lends a hand. Um, I use four main tools, a water truck, uh, a tractor with a power harrow attachment, a grader and another water truck which is mainly just for wheel packing and compaction. So a Sunday and a Monday is just a lot of watering, um, multiple times a day just trying to break through the hard crust of the clay ready for, for Tuesday when I will um, use the tractor and power harrow to, to open the track up and then introduce more water once it's opened which gives me an idea of what areas need more or less water and then roll it down and then throughout the course of the rest of Tuesday more so more water. Wednesday much the same if there's areas that need it it's just an even water. Roll it back down once it dries off I'll then grade it from the bottom to the top which will smooth it out ready for cars to roll out for a Wednesday practice at about six o'clock. Come Thursday we'll grade the dirt back down keep continue watering on Thursday depending on what the weather is if it's really hot you, you're obviously putting a lot more water in if it's a bit cooler, then um, you can kind of back off a little bit with the water because the, the less sun or cloud cover will help to keep it in the track. Friday again, open it up with the tractor, water it, roll it down, and then much the same on a Saturday morning. When we open up the track and, and introduce water to it, it's important that clay rolls down in a very smooth way. If the track doesn't roll down smooth and flat, that's when you get a lot of tyre wear because it becomes very abrasive. So. It's pretty critical on race day to have the clay to a damp enough consistency so that it will mould down almost like plasticine or modelling clay. During the event, um, we're monitoring an, a number of things. Um, we're obviously looking at the track, looking where the cars are running, uh, whether they're running through the middle, the bottom, the top. We're looking at tyres on the cars, which gives us a good indication of uh, what the track's doing. Once the sun goes down and we've got a pretty good idea of what the, what the track's doing by that stage, then if it's, um, if it's at the stage where we're quite slick, we can use the tractor and the power harrow to open up certain parts of the corners, whether it be top, whether it be bottom, and that will enable us to, to get the cars running um, you know, in places they may not be running currently, which then opens up the passing opportunities and, and makes the race more entertaining for the spectators. The ideal track uh, that we're looking for on a race night is um, it's going to have multiple lines, so at least a bottom and at least a top. Whereas when the track slicks off and, and through the middle it becomes slick and then you end up with a top and a bottom line, it brings it a lot back to the driver. So the driver has to think about where they're going to pull their lines from, which promotes a lot more passing because you end up with slide jobs and stuff like that. So it's a lot more entertaining to watch. We're obviously trying to make a track as well that's got little to no tyre wear. Where we have 30 to 35 laps, ideally we've, we've had a bottom groove, we've had a top groove, sometimes the middle groove will come in too, which means there's going to be lots of passing and puts on a really good race for the spectators and the drivers enjoy that too. Manders and Pickens, it's a row of three. Unbelievable race here in the speed cars as they come out of three and four. Pickens is back in front. Perth Motorplex has what's called progressive banking, so around the pole line and curb, it's 
almost, almost flat, maybe one to two degrees of banking. Um, and then that progressively increases as you get up towards the fence, up to around about the 12 degree mark. What that does is it, is it means that cars have to work around the pole line, because naturally the pole line is shorter. Um, whereas when they get up around the fence, the banking helps them and it, what it does is it creates multiple lines. Not everyone runs around the pole line or not everyone runs around the top because both, both are equally as fast um, and it just comes down to the driver setup or the car setup and, and where the driver prefers to run or where they find a quicker line. The end result, if you get it right, a racetrack that is designed to provide safe and entertaining racing for the drivers and the fans. The cumulative effort of hundreds of man hours from a small army of people and equipment. The work never stops.